So time is up. We wanted to start the session. Welcome to the session, day one, event number 161. The title is Towards the Vision of the Internet for the Inform Informed Society. In Japanese, maybe I'm not good translator, but I translate Joho Kashaka no Keru Internet Vision ni Mukete that I translated. And the, this session is moderated by IFRA, International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions. Um, so we will have the two hours. I guess it's enough time. But uh, as far as I'm Japanese, um, if the audience are do, if you want to speak in Japanese. Um, don't hesitate to speak in Japanese. So both Japanese and English, we can do manage for this session. So there are uh, five speakers of this session, and each speaker is, um, we will introduce, uh, I will introduce the speakers of each, and after presentation, we accept your questions and answers. That is same as offline and online. So online audiences, uh, you are welcome to ask questions just after the presentation. And after five presentations, uh, we will have the, a longer question and answer or present your own opinion time. We will have the very good discussion, I hope. So we wanted to start to that uh, presentations. So the organizer is IFRA. IFRA uh, headquarters located in The Hague in the Netherlands. Um, that is the International Federation of the Library Associations and Institutions. We are library professionals group. And the, I, I am uh, in Oweyasio. I'm the former governing board member of the IFRA and also uh, Tokyo University professor on library and information sciences. I'm an educator on library and information sciences. And the online uh, moderators, uh, two persons, Stephen and Maria, uh, are the moderator online. So, So first speaker is Mr. Wisdom. So Mr. Wisdom is a very recent to retired librarian from the National Library of New Zealand, um, the chair of the Asia Okay, uh, Oceania Regional uh, Division Committee of IFRA and the member of the IFRA Regional Council. And uh, he coordinated IFRA's professional activities during the uh, 1990s. From 2001 until this year, he was an international advisor at the National Library of New Zealand. And he, he was a New Zealand government delegate at the UN World Summit on the Information Society, uh, WSIS in Geneva, 2003, and the second WSIS in Tun Tunis in 2005. Uh, he had re uh, remained uh, in the involved in um, multi-stakeholder governance of the internet set up by WSIS. In his ongoing work for the Asia-Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum, uh, APRIGF, he focuses on collaboration between the library sector and the internet technical sector uh, in the uh, interest of equitable, equitable access to information, promotion of digital information literacy, diversity, and human rights in cyberspace. So, Mr. Weston, would you present your uh, presentation, please? Uh, 
Thank you, Yasuyu. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I should speak more loudly. Thank you. Okay. So my name is Winston Roberts, and I have spent several years presenting, representing the National Library of New Zealand uh, in IFLA, and also several years representing New Z IFLA in various uh, parts of the world and recent, more recently representing IFLA in Asia-Pacific as the chair of the Asia-Pacific Regional Division Committee. And I have now stepped down from that and it is being represented by other people now. Two of the members of that committee are present in the room and they are our two Japanese colleagues, Misako and Ray. And now, We've called the, this session Towards a Vision of the Internet for an Informed Society. Now, this is a session for library uh, professionals. It's a session for technology professionals. It's for both sectors because we believe that there are many issues of concern shared by both sectors. Libraries use the internet as a platform and the internet, uh, people who, who coordinate, who run, who regulate the internet and who use it need to uh, work with libraries because libraries provide content and use it as a platform. We need to talk to the technology people because they need to understand how we formulate content, how we mediate it and how we explain it to the communities who are our users. Okay, slide two. Thank you, Ms. Huckle. So, libraries are um, a sector of education services and information services in all countries. They are well known to everyone, in fact. Everyone grows up with libraries. And in, in fact, we are talking here on this slide about public libraries, but um, so many of these comments apply to national libraries, scientific libraries, business libraries. But to make it simple, let's call it public libraries here because they are the ones which most people know from a young age right through their lives, in fact, until they become old and they rely on lifelong learning, just like me. So public libraries are windows open on the world, in fact. They're open to everyone and available in most places at most times available at no cost or minimum cost. In the case of children and youth, libraries provide internet safety, protecting younger users and in fact older users against undesirable content, which uh, could be uh, misinformation, disinformation, or simply, uh, or in the worst cases, uh, pornography. Library staff are trained professionals. They know how to protect younger people against the, uh, some of the vices that we see on the internet. Library users, uh, li sorry, libraries, particularly public libraries, provide three essential things to their users. They provide the physical connectivity, the, the, um, uh, the by subscriptions to broadband services run by their governments. So connectivity is the first main thing. And secondly, libraries can lend users devices. They can let users use devices in the library and train these people in uh, digital skills. Because we cannot assume that everybody in society has the uh, training available and the economic strength in their families to be able to buy expensive devices. And the third thing is that library staff can explain to young people and old people how to evaluate information. Libraries have a vocation to develop information literacy that is evaluating sources of information, 
teaching people how to understand, to, to distinguish between good sources and bad sources. They can also uh, promote digital information literacy, which is more a term relating to understanding the, uh, the technology and how to use the devices, as opposed to information literacy, which you can understand as uh, the sort of intellectual appreciation of the information on the net. Thank you. Next slide, please, Ms. Ako. So, the important thing for libraries is that the internet should be trustworthy, it should be well governed, it should be ubiquitous and affordable, not just for the library sector, of course, but for the whole of society. Now, what do these terms mean? Trustworthy means that the, um, the, the management, the control, the governance of the internet should be, uh, should, uh, be truthful, it should be legal, it should relate to the laws of the country, it should relate to cultural norms, and it should be uh, according to the regulation which is uh, prepared by governments and parliaments and in principle uh, regulation in consultation between the governing authorities and communities. And it should relate to the technical standards of the internet itself. And when we talk about a ubiquitous internet and an affordable internet, that means basically it should be available everywhere to everyone at a price that people can afford that is, even in uh, deprived communities, in vulnerable communities, people who may be living in small villages away from the main cities, and uh, in many cases, indigenous communities who may feel cut off from mainstream society. It should be available to all of these people so that they all have what we would call, we do call, equitable access to information. So the inf access to information should be available to all, regardless of gender, whether they're men, women, children, and uh, regardless of age, regardless of their educational achievements, regardless of where they live, it sh and regardless of their, their cultures and their religious convictions, the internet should be available for all. It should be a mainstream service like electricity and water. And just like those things, it should be clean and reliable. Now, the reason for focusing on the internet is because all publications that you see in life are written on the internet, essentially, or by applications. They are processed, they're disseminated through the internet. Libraries need the internet as a platform, as I've already said. and the content of the internet, uh, the content that which people create in their daily lives, they put back onto the internet through uh, social media and through their personal and business communications. All these, all these sources of information cycled around and go back onto the internet. So I'm using the word internet not just in the hard sense of the technology, but in the sense of the applications which are derived from the internet which everyone the applications which everyone uses can i have the next slide please miss ako thank you and there are gaps and challenges because um, Some of the um, some of the technology some of the underlying technologies still require to be um, directly uh, controlled by internet societies in all countries and by multi-stakeholder input 
to the governance of the internet. When the internet was created in 2005, when the internet governance process was created in 2005, the, uh, the task was given by the United Nations to the multi-stakeholder community, that is to say a community of uh, academia, of civil society organizations, of government-run organizations, the technology sector, and uh, all sectors of the community which have an interest in the use of the technology. And then the United Nations also decided in 2005 that at the World Summit on the Information Society, the United Nations decided that the, the role of this Internet Governance Forum should be to discuss public policy questions, questions of broad public interest, which are of interest, therefore, to governments who legislate, of the community who use, uh, sorry, the technology sector who develop and create and extend the internet, and then finally the public sector, um, public, uh, sorry, civil society, uh, communities within civil society, communities in all countries which use the applications of the internet and rely on it for their everyday life, for their employment, for their health, for, um, for their interactions with their governments. So it, the internet concerns human rights and when there are infringements of human rights, such as with misinformation, then we should all be concerned. And in fact, we in the library sector are very concerned because in the library sector, we believe in access to information, in truthful information, and uh, freedom of access to information without restrictions. Except, of course, that we want it to be responsible information as uh, UNESCO advises us. One more minute. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. So, many of those things I was just talking about have been discussed at the regional Asia-Pacific uh, Internet Governance Forum, which has just taken place in Australia. And their final outcomes document, synthesis document, it's called, is circulating at this meeting here in Kyoto. So I would encourage you to try to get a copy of that synthesis document and see what people in your region here in Asia Pacific are saying about the challenges facing the internet. But uh, what the... Um, what the library sector thinks about this particularly is that we would like you to partner with libraries. We think that your associations should correspond, should uh, advocate to your governing authorities to update legislation on uh, the internet or the use of the internet in libraries, on making it more accessible. We want our own professional staff to develop their own knowledge of the internet and how it is used, how it is, has developed in the past and what its prospects are for the future, to remain integrated and, and affordable and also uh, consistent and part of national planning. And we want the library associations and technology associations to cooperate in formulating policy at national level. Uh, next slide, please. Misako, thank you. Um, Yusuryu, thank you. These are the reasons why IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, engages with multi-stakeholder governance. We represent all types of libraries. We advocate for authorities to recognize the essential social, and intellectual, and economic role of libraries. I mentioned equitable access to information. That is our, one of our key values. And we discuss our values with the other sectors who are involved in governing the internet. 
Um, next slide, please, Ms. Ak um, Yasuyu. Now, the question you may be asking yourself is, this is all very interesting, we hope you think that, but how can you personally engage from, in your personal capacity, how can you, as a librarian, a professional, engage with internet governance? Well, one way is to start with the internet manifesto, which IFLA is revising. We had a, we published a manifesto 10 years ago, we are updating it actively now, and my colleagues here from IFLA headquarters will talk to you about that and engage within your library associations, within your technology associations. Talk to partners, multi-stakeholder partners, about policies and best practices for internet governance. It's in the interests of everyone in society. Next slide, please. And just to show you that what I've been saying is not just words, not just concepts, these are real people. I've chosen this photograph because it is showing a bunch of school a class full uh, of school children in the National Library of New Zealand who've come in for a class in the National Library and here they are, uh, I'm trying to demonstrate to you with this photograph that library services are for real people, that internet governance is a con not just a concept, but it's a concept that these children have grown up with. The internet is something they have grown up with. They are digital natives. They have had experienced the internet ever since they were born. And not like me, I would, I would uh, you know, grew up in the age of dial-up telephones. These children are in a completely different situation. They have uh, they're here in the National Library learning about the history of their country. They are learning about cultural heritage documents and they are exp having these uh, historical documents explained to them by uh, one of my colleagues, in fact, the lady in the black on, on the left. And all of these things, the point, the whole point of this photograph is that all of these things are available in the National Library on the internet, you can talk about them in person with these school children. You can also find all these things on the internet. Without the internet, libraries could not do their job nearly as well as they are doing it. We absolutely need the internet, therefore we need it to work, we need it to be well regulated, we need it to be clean and affordable and everywhere all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Winston. Um, a little bit longer presentations, and I'm not sure, but uh, um, how about uh, some questions or opinions? Later on, we will accept more longer questions, but if you wanted to know that, some quick questions, she is happy to answer it. Um, I think you need a microphone, Maria. Thank you, sir, for a very interesting um, presentation. My name is Izumi Aiz. I was early uh, involved with the MAG and IGF and APRIGF, but, but for some reason I have kept some distance and glad to be back. <laughs> the, my question is, what's the biggest concern for the librarians, the libraries, uh, if you could spell out, with this almost uh, unexpected information explosion that will still continue, with the use of these smartphones and uh, many things, while the libraries are not seemingly developing per se as a people's mind and inside perception. I might be wrong, but if you could answer to me, thank you. What's the challenge? I have a question, would you answer to that? Uh, I can answer. Uh, sure. Libraries have always dealt with the information explosion. The information explosion began with Gutenberg. Libraries have, uh, libraries uh, provide information in printed form and in online form, and 
the explosion is something that libraries manage. I don't really understand uh, the problem you're, you're uh, trying to address because libraries are, in a sense, the origin of the circulation of information in part in, in the economy. The information economy is what libraries are, uh, are developing. We are the motor of the information economy. And libraries have always operated according to technical standards, just as the internet has developed technical standards. Libraries have operated according to legislation, which provides for education, uh, in education in each country according to its own culture, but standards for education, standards for the teaching of different subjects in each country, Libraries support, underlie that service in each country. And the internet is doing essentially the same job in our perspective. Does that really, uh, that doesn't really answer all of your question, but <laughs> the, if, you, if, if you had been- to interact or a better way till the, all the speakers finish, yeah, and then we yeah. can go into a much wider deeper debate perhaps. But Thank if you, you come if you come to the Asia Pacific Internet Regional Internet Governance Forum. I will not. <laughs> Sorry. I I'm was the organizer in the beginning. I stopped. Uh, that takes too much time. So let's skip and go ahead. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. So actually um I among the presentations the our uh, internet manifest is uh, presented, but we don't know, maybe uh, if a person will explain with that. We should uh, uh, proceed to the next speaker, uh, Nina Nakaola. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> uh, Nina, uh, I, I should introduce to her that the, she, she, is, she works at the International School Suba Fiji, and she's also a member of the IFRA Asia Oceania Regional Division Committee. Uh, Nina has uh, engaged in uh, internet governance uh, related issues for a long time and has participated in previous visions of the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Forum. She has extensive experience with online learning solutions. So maybe she will present the school schools and school libraries and the internet. Nina? Thank you. Um, Bulavinaka. Bulavinaka and Nwaiai e Muri. I am excited to be here and to contribute to making the internet a better place for knowledge and learning. Um, I am a school librarian with International School Suva. Our, our school offers the International Baccalaureate um, curriculum from the primary years program through to the diploma program. We also offer the Australian Capital Territory Senior Secondary Certificate to year 11 and 12 students. And our student population totals just under 600 and is made up of 54 nationalities. As a whole school, K to 12 library, we are in a very privileged position to connect with our learning community. And it is always wonderful to see our students reading and enjoying or using our resources to increase their knowledge. Next slide, please. Um, I am here today to share how our school library operated during COVID-19 lockdown and restrictions when our school transitioned to online learning. Next slide, please. Thank you. Thank you. Access to the internet through a decent network, 
mobile phone and laptop enabled me to enabled me to stay connected with family, library colleagues, and our fabulous learning community, we were able to create and share amazing resources to keep our learners motivated during those uncertain times. Next slide, please. Oh, thank you. Um, during COVID-19 lockdown, and restrictions, our library checked out approximately 12,072 library items. Our learners checked out print material by completing a library Google request form or by placing a hold through our online library management system. And we use Destiny Discover by Follett. Um, I am part of the single subject teachers rotation and we used the Seesaw platform. I would share curated digital collections from Epic School, which is free to use during school hours. Free resources from publishers, author read alouds, and I even recorded some, rec uh, some readings for our primary students to, en to encourage and sustain reading for pleasure and to support our year, their year level curriculums. Year two to five students um, read 2,853 books from Epic School and that uh, totaled 750 hours. And they were only able to achieve this because of internet connectivity. Our students um, were able to enjoy reading in different formats. They had access to books, audio books, videos, and read to me books which was great for students who had not yet um, become independent readers. Our secondary students had access to Sora, Overdrive student reading app. This made it possible for our library to purchase class sets and simultaneous reading material. And this was a way uh, we were able to get textbooks into our students' hands. Um, I had a look at our print circulation statistics before uh, coming over to Japan. From January to this, January this year to uh, the end of term three, which was three weeks ago, our library checked out a total of 24,149 items. However, books are extremely expensive in Fiji and non-fiction material can quickly become out of date. So we have to subscribe to age-appropriate res uh, resources to ensure that our learners have access to a wide variety of credible resources. Um, next slide, please. And as you can see, our students' 2022 MAP test results. Um, from the results, it shows that their reading growth is higher than the international average. Uh, what we do as libraries and school library staff is very important. We create multimedia content to cater for the different learning styles and reading preferences. We wouldn't be able to achieve this if we didn't have access to internet. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. We conducted a student survey in 2022 to understand how we could better help our students with their research. Um, the results, as you can see, was knowing which scholarly or credible resources to use because of the vast amount of information and the potential biases out there. Conducting media and information literacy sessions would help our students save time and keep them motivated. We demonstrated how to evaluate online sources, how to use them ethically and cite them right. And um, we, used, we also used this time to promote our online subscriptions so that they could use our resources more effectively. Just recently, we have, um, we have started to use Turnitin Draft Coach to help our students um, improve their writing um, and to ensure that they are citing, uh, making ethical use of the information out there. 
Next slide, please. Um, with the help of the International Federation of Library Associations uh, and our contact at the, the Ito K Affairs Trust Board, we were able to translate IFLA's How to Spot Fake News uh, flyer into the Ito K language. That's our local vernacular. We felt that this was important to do and uh, disseminated the Ito K flowers to our flyers to our local library network because people needed information that they could understand, especially in this dis digital age of misinformation. Next slide, please. Um, the, the Pacific Libraries Network was established in 2019, and one of our biggest challenges is internet, con internet connectivity. Libraries need quality access to digital infrastructure to help reduce the digital divide and provide our communities with a wider range of digital resources and to equip our communities with relevant digital skills. The next slide, please. Oh, I'd just like to add that our school was one of the few fortunate ones that was able to go uh, to transition from in or on campus learning to online learning. And it would be nice if, um, if all local schools um, had access to internet so their students wouldn't have um, missed out on learning. During COVID-19 restrictions, the Fiji Library Association held a webinar in October 2021 to commemorate Global Media and Information Literacy Week. Our main objective was to highlight the importance of access to information and media freedom. And to conclude, we tried to make the best use of our library budget. Um, it is limited and digital resources have become more cost effective. Our students can simul simultaneously use digital material. They have access to information in different formats and languages. They can access our library anytime and from anywhere. And it is also easier for our library team to share and collaborate with our learning community. I agree with um, my colleague, Mr. Winston Roberts. The internet should be accessible for all and libraries have the potential to help our communities use digital resources and spaces ethically. Vinaka. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. So we will accept the uh, questions to her. To Maria, are there Maria, are there any online questions? No, no. no. I just uh, forget to ask the are there any librarians among audiences? I, I, can I ask a question? Yeah, I, sure. I apologize. This is <coughs> an, an inside question. So I'm Stephen Weiber. I also I work for IFLA. Um, but I'd be interested within the curriculum for students within Fiji, is, is there media literacy as part of the main curriculum or is it the library taking on this responsibility? We don't follow the local curriculum, so I'm not able to to answer your question. Sorry about that. But um, I know there, post-COVID, there, um, there is work in the pipeline to help our library staff to upskill local library staff to better um, meet the need out there. Thank you. Thank you. Because because we don't have a large group of people in the room, maybe I can ask you which sector you represent 
those of you, you people who have come to the session. Winston, Winston, so, sorry, I wanted to ask the other presenters. After all presentation finished, I, I will ask the audience to which sector they are coming from. Okay, cool. All right? So we will have the maybe the discussion among us, audiences, uh, which background they have, all right? So the next presentator is Masako Nomura. Misako, Misako Nomura. Sorry, my pronunciation, I should say in Japanese. <laughs> So uh, Misako is, is a real Japanese person, and I want to introduce to her. Uh, she, she is a board member of the Chief Secre Secretariat of the Assistive Technology Development Organization, ATDO, in Japan. And she advocates ensuring access to information for persons with disabilities using accessible technology, such as DAISY, based on the SDG statement, leaving no one behind. For material of the IFRA library service to persons with special needs section, currently member of the IFRA regional division committee for Asia Oceania, secretary of Japan Deiji Consortium, member of Japan Library Association's committee on library services for uh, persons with disabilities, and a member of Daskin leadership training for young per persons with disabilities in Asia and the Pacific Committee. So, to Misako. Thank you. <coughs> Can I? Uh, okay. Um, thank you for your kind introduction. I have been working for persons with disability for many years while promoting uh, assistive technology, such as DAISY, and accessible EPUB format in my organization and through libraries. With these experiences, I'd like to talk about accessibility and inclusion for persons with print disabilities who have difficulties in reading, such as dyslexia through the internet. So next, please. So uh, just a little, little bit about the uh, definition of libraries and internet. Uh, I, I identify library from different perspective. Uh, like uh, library have two roles. Public library is the legally mandated hub for accessible published information including information published on the web in most of our countries, I think. National Library is responsible for compiling national bibliography to cover of all publication in the countries, which is basic mechanism to share information on both conventional and electronic publication and provide it nationally and internationally, I, I, th I think. So uh, this is my clarification, my, uh, my thought. And uh, next, please. To ensure access to information for all uh, many people said about it. So accessible to all is very important. So we libraries promote <coughs> freedom expression, um, wisdom already, already mentioned. We often hear nothing about us without us. Have you ever heard of the phrase? We are this is from disability community. We respect the voice from persons with disabilities and the leave no one behind and the university uni universal literacy under the SDGs, as you know. 
and also under the IHRA Code of Ethics for Library and other information, the, uh, the core mission of libraries and other information workers to is to ensure access to information for all persons for personal development, education, culture, enrichment, leisure, economic activity, and informed, informed participation in and enhancement of democracy. Next, please. So how we have developed access technology for persons with disabilities, a little bit about our, our activities to promote accessibility for persons with disabilities. It is uh, from WSIS outcome document as a result of activity to raise awareness by disability community with the presence of people with disability during the WSIS in 2003 and 2005, actually participated uh, to uh, World Summit Information Society. Uh, it, it has started for, it, for me to come to know what is the internet for a person with disabilities at that time. It clearly says the uh, equitable access to information and uh, using universal design and the use of assistive technology. The document clearly said that, that it, it is important for me and uh, I hope you will understand. And, uh, and the next please. This is a photo from the forum held on 2005. This is a second global forum on disability in the information society at the second phase of WSIS. In it is Tunis. I, I took at that time sign language interpretation and blind persons is a speakers. So we are uh, we invited uh, some uh, people with disability to present the or uh, the ask them to speak out their needs at that time. And uh, so, uh, then next please. I will give you Japanese example to promote accessible textbooks by provo providing DAISY EPUB format to the elementary and junior high school students with print disabilities. After the Japanese copyright was amended in 2008, so copyright is a very important to uh, to have accessibility for person with a disability in reading, and uh, at that time I took an initiative in providing such accessible textbooks. Uh, we in co co collaboration a network consisting of volunteers and non-profit organizations and the related ICT industries started to, we, uh, we started to produce accessible textbooks to students with print disability. In another word, reading disabilities. There were eight users at the beginning and now there are more than 20,000 users as of 2022. However, I feel we still cannot reach the students in need. While promoting it, 
we encouraged libraries, local education board to get involved in these activities. Next, please. This is a sample of Japanese Daisy EPUB textbooks played in the reading software. Have you seen that? Text and audio and uh, images are synchronized. And uh, so uh, this is a sample. Japanese Daisy EPUB textbooks played in the reading software, as I said. Text and audio and images are synchronized. Text is highlighted while its audio is heard so that you know where to read. You see the navigation feature on the left with the reading system and the, with the reading system, the font size, color contrast, and the speed can be changed with the needs of users. It's a ki kind of a customization. So, and uh, actually, uh, how many of you <laughs> know Daisy EPA format? It's a kind of the, <laughs> it's a, it, it is the uh, EPA, is maybe you heard of when you use iPad or iPhone. Daisy stands for, oh, sorry, next please. Yeah, Daisy stands for Digital Accessible Information System developed by the Daisy Consortium, a spin-off consortium organized by member of IFLA section of the Library for the Blind in 1996. So activities are relevant IFLA. EPUB is electronic publishing industry standards being developed and maintained by the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, you know. EPUB and EPUB accessibility registers as a standard of international uh, standards organization, you know, ISO. Accessible EMA, EPUB is the latest version of DAISY. So DAISY and EPUB are hi highly compatible from the user's perspective. Most of the newly developed DAISY reading devices may read EPUB too. So therefore, people often put them together, such as DAISY and slash EPUB in practice. I hope uh, you, you wanted, I wanted to try DAISY EPUB story. <laughs> and next please. Last but not least, what are the strategy for legitimacy and inclusion with print disabilities? I have two versions. <laughs> one is English and another one is the in Japanese. But actually, vertical writing, we have a, a, the a vertical writing, which is very unique in Japan. So sometimes it's so difficult to uh, show it properly. So kind of uh, internationalization is we, uh, many people speak out about that. But internationalization have to be accessible to all countries. You have, you know, we have a Ruby, Hiragana, Katagana, <laughs> so many characters. That means we, I like uh, uh, the uh, alphabetical country considered about this, which is very difficult to uh, show properly. S so, uh, then the, oh yeah, I forgot to say, what a strategy, and actually, I, I like you to bear in mind right of access to information as a fundamental human right. 
many previous people said, understanding the needs of a person with diverse disabilities and other underserved community members with constellation laboratory aging society and climate change. Combination of universal design and assistive technology is very important. Actually, we promote assistive technology. Sometimes uh, some people don't know what is assistive technology, but uh, the we, we use combination of universal design and assistive, assistive technology at the same time because uh, the, uh, the person with uh, disability have their own needs differently. And the Bon Accessible Web Publishing and Accessible EPUB is most promising solution, which we are really promoting it. Web content accessibility guidelines is very important. Uh, I think uh, the like uh, today, accessible ebook e and uh, it's very related to web content accessibility guidelines and uh, promoting and uh, supporting through participation of pers persons with disabilities from libraries, I think. So I'd like you to use library when you use, uh, when you, when you need it. It's easy to go there and uh, get information, but uh, also you like to, to you enjoy your life. So w what else do you think as a be uh, the strategy for everyone to read and enjoy your life? Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Echo. So um, she, she mentioned about uh, the disabilities, inclusion and diversity, um, maybe with daisy or ebook things. Do you have any questions or comment? Thank you again. Uh, my quick question is, do you have any user data or statistics in t for EPUB and its trend? The provider side is fine, but how many people are actually using them? How much is more important, perhaps? Can you trace them? I'm not sure about it, because some people use it without knowing it. It is EPUB. When you use in EPUB, uh, iPad, then uh, you can have an EPUB format document, but they don't know it. So I don't know, but uh, in Japan, we started to provide a EPUB uh, format textbooks to elementary, junior high school students with print disabilities. So maybe we promote it in Japan. Yeah, yeah. So for, uh, yeah, 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 for users, you mean uh, EPUB or Japan DAISY? Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, users survey. I did it. Yes, ev every year. But, but I, I think, <laughs> I don't know, but the user's expression about how good it is. Um, so uh, the, the like, you know, like uh, it is uh, accessible, or they they can read very well, or they can understand, uh, rather than uh, just uh, reading printed books. So such such a thing, we we had a survey every year. So it it encouraged to continue providing it with uh, such good comments from users. So I guess there is no statistical, statistical result, but they have some a kind of the descriptive 
uh, result from the users. Uh, Weston? Could I suggest? Could I suggest that if you, if the gentleman asking the question would like to give us his question in writing, we can refer it to the IFLA section of. Don't smile. The IFLA section of libraries for the blind, and the sections dealing with information services for disabled people. We can get you statistical answers without any trouble. We do not personally hear, we hear in the room, we do not have that statistical information. We can get it easily for you. Yeah. Now, now Mike, it's going to you, so just. I know, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just to clarify, I'm not just asking the statistics or facts to Misako. I wanted to to ask how she perceives or you guys perceive the user's situation, the data. That's a totally different thing, if I may. See what I mean? So how much awareness you guys have as a provider to improve the user's cases in numbers and in qualities and quantities? So, but I would defer that to the later discussion because um, if it is on a, I think other presentations will be there, right? I agree. I agree that we should not go down a rabbit hole of statistical discussion. Absolutely, we are here to deal with pol policy issues, not data. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now uh, we will accept the uh, next speaker, but the next speaker just arrived, so maybe I will change the, the, the order. So Boro uh, uh, speaking will be the uh, faster, and then Lei Iwasaki will present her works. So are you all right, yeah. Boro? Yes. Well, so the you. Boro, um, you should, uh, yeah, do you? Uh, do I you think the video first and then uh, the slide only uh, two slides that I'm S going to share. So the the video do yeah. you want to show first? Yes. And then slide. And slides only two slides later slide number 10 and 11 to make it quick. You say that. Okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> because you say that uh, I have too many slides and then I just cut it into two slides that is consists of the policy this uh, Vincent said that we are more to the policy than I come to the uh, Hold uh, on a second. I, I'm preparing for that. Okay. So would you give me some time for it? Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, okay, before the, to play that, I just want to say something first. Okay, thank you for IFLA who uh, has invited me to come to here. And I'm very happy to be here sh to share and what the NLE, the National Library of Indonesia has done to the public libraries so that they can take benefit of the internet access as the result that their user can generate income for their family. We believe that if we involve public libraries, especially those who are in villages, some of the SDGs programs can be achieved faster. And I'll show you about 30 second, a three minutes video to support what I've just mentioned, that public library access internet can uh, generate income for, their, uh, for the users in the, in the villages. Yes. Yeshiko, can you play the video? Uh, hold on a second. Yeah. Where's the video? This video is was taken about two weeks ago. There's a activities, we call that is peer learning uh, meeting, national levels, that we will learn from one public library to another public library, and they share what they do so far. And those who join this meeting for the pub, uh, peer learning, it's about one, uh, 1,000 uh, librarians from the villages to come to the, uh, to the meeting. Yes. Yeah, 
Before that, I forgot to uh, introduce her. She, she is a senior librarian from the National Library of Indonesia. So the, I, I guess the Davido is from Indonesia, yes. am I right? Yeah. So the, maybe after that, I, I will yeah. introduce her and show up her slide. Yes. So, first Thank three. Most of us are questioning, is it possible that internet access can be provided by libraries in the villages or remote areas? What public libraries can do by providing internet access to the community in the villages or in the remote areas? Do the communities can take benefit from it? Hi, I'm Woro Salikin, Senior Librarian from the National Library of Indonesia. In a second, I will show you something that you might not believe it. I will take you to a tour to 34 library stalls, and I will stop in several stalls on the way. The stalls are prepared by libraries in Indonesia. They work together from provincial, district, village levels, representing from the very west and east edge of Indonesia. In each stall, they show their community products. These communities are their library users. The community engagement is so substantial here. Their community learn and do different activities in the libraries. They also take benefits from the internet connection provided by the libraries freely. they can search for information of course apply for job learn with processor learn new things and also get inspiration on how to generate their incomes some of them learn how to become creative and some of them learn how to prepare their products and sell them online such as Cookies, chicken and fish floss, banana, cassava chips, coffee, teas, honey, and also plenty of handicrafts. This is the end of my tour. I hope you convinced now that using library services equipped with internet access in remote areas in Indonesia can elevate communities' income. Bye. See you in the next video. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that is the this is the product that I brought. It's some of them. Yeah, that's not uh, what is it? Um, we don't we made up that one, but this is true that the the public libraries, li uh, those in villages come and then they share, they show. And even that we have uh, an e-commerce uh, platform for them to sell the, 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 their products. And this is, you may be questioning uh, why National Library do this. It, we have different, a, a uniqueness of the, our libraries. Because those uh, public libraries usually mostly about the research and then preservation, library networking, and dispository center and reference. But in Indonesia, we have library development center. They, uh, you should go, would you please uh, s uh, go to the slide 10? Yeah. There's one uh, function of the National Library is library development center. We have the obligation to develop national library system 
to support the national education system and also we have to guarantee the sustainability of the libraries as the community learning center. So we have to develop libraries in all type of libraries that make us different. And that's one of the program that we develop right now actually is the transformation based on the inclusions that which I talk, we'll talk about it in the third session for uh, late, uh, late, uh, later, I think. And this, uh, what we have as the policy, uh, hold on a second. of course the concept of the f uh, policy framework actually that we need that the connectivity content and the human resources. That is the most important thing. With connectivity, we are, can answer that things. Yeah, there's limited connectivity and access to essential knowledge and information indeed due to the geographic and infrastructure factors that happens in Indonesia because we are very big countries. And then also the content, there is a limited knowledge and information resources available, especially the local content, and also for human resources development in, a, in ability of person to access and obtain useful knowledge and information due to physical, uh, geographic, uh, contextual, and physiological barriers. And that is one of the uh, three things that we concern as the national libraries, and then we try to make that try to give a solution to that problems. Actually, we try to improve knowledge and information access infrastructure. We work together with uh, the, inform uh, the, uh, the uh, Ministry of Information, uh, Communication and Information. And mm -hmm. we also work with the Ministry of Education and Culture to support the content and also with the other uh, ministry that uh, we can contribute all the contents. And then strengthening resources and content of knowledge information, that's also, and we also motivate those who in regional and local government to create a local uh, content so they can share uh, to their others. And then we also have to strengthen context of knowledge for information for individuals. The aiming of that actually to improve individual capabilities and prosperities. That is the impact that we want to reach actually. And that is also one of the goals of the SDGs. That's why I said that if we talk about the SDGs, we talk about it in the village, then probably half of the problems can solve. But if you don't touch the village, then uh, that will be uh, difficult because all happenings in the village, uh, let's say poverty is there. Uh, again, and greens also there. And also health is there. Education is there. So once we can talk and uh, we can finish the problems in the villages, uh, then probably that's some of the problems of the ages uh, can be solved. And we, as the National Library, we want to penetrate that, give them the access, the content as a resource, uh, then they can share, they, they can learn. Because what we try to do actually in the, the, in the, the public libraries actually that they can learn, they can share, and they can do the activities. That's why they have this product. Thank you, I think that uh, my presentation. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Don Means. Uh, fascinating story. I, I was unclear on the the actual role of the village libraries, are they, are they creating an environment for people in the village to create these products or are the libraries themselves creating the products? Yeah, actually we have the program that is the transformation of uh, library transformation based on the inclus inclusion based, uh, social inclusion based. It means that the library, the national library gives them the content, the books, and the on, uh, either that is physical and also the digital books, 
And then also we provide them with the PC that they can access the information and also they can give the internet access, they can learn. And then we have facilitators to advocate them things that what they really, what is it, uh, uh, the, the main concern of them, they, what they, they want to get the, the, what is it? They want to get, let's say, the product of these things, then they concentrate on this. Uh, it's, it's, it's localized, I mean, it's, it depends on what they, they want uh, to, to develop, actually. If they want to develop coffee, then they make coffee. They, they, they teach about barri uh, what is it, barista, and then if it is tourism there, then the, we, the, national, uh, the, the, pub, the village library with the facilitators will invite, uh, what is it, uh, also can get, what is it, uh, learning in English and also French. One of the in, the, in the area, in a remote area, it was out of the blue, then they say that, uh, well, we, we train our guide, tour guide uh, with French. How come? Because the tourists come from France, they want to do the monitor, uh, monitor, uh, monitoring in certain area. So the library, this we said, uh, training there, we're working with the teacher from the uh, senior high school teachers, and also working with the courses. And then they said, okay, if work with the courses, then all right, for the basic courses, it's free. But in the intermediate and then in the advanced level, you have to pay because the, the tour guide already have the money so they can, they can pay it. But for the basic that we, we offer them activities. Oh, oh, thank you. I just have a follow-up if I could, a follow-up question. Uh, the, who's providing, how are, you, how are you getting the internet on all these remote places? Actually, that the Minister of uh, Communication and Informa Information, they have project that is one million uh, notes spread it all over Indonesia. And we use that, we work together. Uh, if, uh, in the national level, we talk to the minister, and in the provincial level, we, talk, uh, uh, we ask the governor, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, what is it, provincial level of the libraries to talk to the uh, of uh, the communication office there and also the, the districts so they can uh, uh, allocate certain notes for the library. The, the, uh, the, of the, the, communi uh, the communication and information office is in the level, very low levels that they can, okay, we, library doesn't have the money. So we can use the, the, their money to provide uh, in the internet. And also we work with all uh, Indonesian Telkom to provide how many How many libraries have connections or how many well, would like to have yes, connections? Yes, this project actually, we have 1,696 uh, public uh, village libraries. That is in the village library. And that is, and then for the uh, district libraries, we have about uh, all five, 514 district libraries that is connected to the internet. Yeah. And we also tell them that if the library doesn't have money, uh, don't force themselves to, to create the, uh, what's it, the program to access the internet. Just talk to those offices that deal with the internet so they can share the, the budget. Yeah, we can provide the content, the infrastructure and the connection we talk to the other offices, and that works. Can I add, add a comment to this gentleman? Uh, Mr. Means, um, one of the things I said at the end of my presentation is that the I also talked about National Library Services, um, and I said that without the internet, we couldn't do our job properly the way we are doing. Because uh, I'll give you an example from New Zealand. It's a long, thin country. It's a bit like Chile, long and thin. And the, in the National Library is situated geographically in the center of the country. If we had to, if we obliged researchers or school children and teachers to travel from each end of the country to the capital city in the middle, then most of them would not have access to the cultural materials that they pay for through their taxes. So we disseminate all of our information over the internet. That is one of the great advantages for us 
It's adding to democracy. It's adding to the supporting the education of our kids. And it's got to be paid for. And it, but it's got to run properly. It's got to be regulated properly. Um, national libraries, as my colleague Waro from Indonesia would agree, national libraries are not independent organizations. They depend on government. They are part of the wider public service. They get funded by central government and public libraries get funded by local government. So all of us depend on the taxpayer support and all of the taxpayers as the com national community depend on the internet being regulated correctly to provide all of these services. It's a symbiosis of all the different interests at play. That's why it is run by a multi-stakeholder community. Does that help? Yeah. Can I add something here? Yes. Uh, with the National Library, that we also have uh, one uh, application that is Indonesian One Search, that uh, we or can connect about three ta three ta uh, three thousand one hundred and sixty three institutions and four thousand nine hundred thirty nine libraries and repository institution 11,686, and all together work there. They support uh, us with their uh, content. They can support not only with the uh, metadata, but also with abstracts, or they can even share with the uh, full text. And we already co uh, collected, it's about uh, 12, uh, 12 million records, and that is, uh, our uh, treasure to the, our dedication, uh, we dedicated this record to the community. They can access, that's why we want them to have internet access. That's why we developed project. Actually, this project uh, goes back to the uh, project that IFLA done, it's a global libraries project. And we try to replicate this and also with we uh, make some adjustment with our conditions. Thank you, Paolo. Um, uh, we have the last speaker accept, so maybe um, we want to uh, hear from the last speaker, Lei Iwasaki. So if you wanted to say more, may after that, uh, we can accept. And uh, sorry, Paolo, I, I cannot show you a slide, sorry. So Lei, Lei Iwasaki has been a professor at Kyoto Notre Dame University in Kyoto, Japan, since 2012. She acquired uh, education on uh, a master's in the University of Tokyo. Her main research professional topics is uh, school library services for children's reading and running in Japan. Uh, she is the chairperson of Kyoto City's Library Council and a member of the board of directors in Kyoto Lifelong Learning Foundation. Previous experience, the chairperson of the meeting of the expert of children's reading in Ministry of the Education, Culture, Sport, Science, and Technology. She won the prize from, from Kyoto City as a person who had rendered distinguished services in education. So now it's your burden for Ray. Hello, um, I'm Ray Iwasaki. I'm speak about school education and school libraries in Japan. Next, please. Mm. In Japan, school libraries are requi required by law. Um, and it enacted in 1953. Next, please. The course of study also recommended the use of school libraries. Next, please. In Japan, literature education has long been the main stream of Japanese language education. In recent years, national policies in light of the PISA 
PISA results have increased the number of materials for reading and understanding information rather than literature. Next, please. Uh, next, uh, yes, thank you. School libraries are also being asked to modify their collections, which used to be dominated by literary works, to include more materials in other fields, such as science reading, materials and philosophy and history and so on. Next. In addition, although media, uh, media are becoming more diverse, in actual schools, the school library contains mainly book materials and the students often use the internet in other classrooms. Next, next please, uh, thank you. At the same time, the library materials are quite diverse and aban abundant about books. Uh, look at next picture. What you see, uh, next please. Uh, Take a look at this picture. In this picture, is a private school libraries where there are uh, 75,000 volumes of library materials, mostly book materials. Um, take a look at the, uh, no, excuse me. Um, although a balance of discipline is necessary, some junior High and high schools have large holdings in their respons respective fields. In contrast, elementary schools generally have small holdings. Uh, next, please. In 2022, the average number of books in school libraries will be uh, about 10,000 for elementary schools. 11,000 for middle schools and about 20, 27,000 for high schools. Mm -hmm. In many public schools, information education is conducted separately from the school library, and the content should be integrated regardless of the media through which information is obtained, but the two have not yet been integrated. The Giga School uh, Initiatives aims to realize an educational ICT environment that will ensure the development of the quality and ability of diverse children, leaving no one behind. It also aims to shift the paradi paradigm of learning. Many issues for implementation have already been presented. Here, we would like to focus on the following two points in relation to school libraries. Next, please. One is need to support home communication environment poverty problem. The need for support for the home communication environment means that support may be necessary depending on the economic situation of the family. For some students who do don't have Wi-Fi at home, for school students who cannot bring home the free tablet distributed at school, there, there may be not be alternative tools at home. And unlike books, there may be electricity and other costs to access information. 
The potential of disadvantage for students from poor families has been noted. This is a problem that has not occurred with traditional school library materials. The second one is insufficient content to learn more information. Insufficient content to learn from is a problem that is especially true for elementary school students. As mentioned earlier, school library materials are also in short supply in elementary schools, and both books and ele electronic resources are in short supply. And more, they don't complement each other. In the future, it will be important not only to prepare tools, but also to develop rich content. Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology also calls for school libraries to diverse, di diversify their medias. Thus, although school libraries um, required to be quite responsible to behavior information Informatization in school education as a whole, school libraries rarely appear in the actual Giga School initiatives. In addition, in promoting the use of online databases and ebooks, the current electronic resources available to elementary school students are insufficient, and sufficient resources cannot be obtained with utilizing both online and print information. In other words, it is necessary to consider the enrichment of the contents of materials for schools, and it is necessary to enhance them, those various media. Being inclusive means providing a fair environment environment for access to information, not only for users with special needs, but also for users who do not have full access to information for other reasons, such as poverty. As a philosophy, the library's principle of equitable access to information for all users. The library format with which does not require separate physical tools can address issues such as poverty in that all users, regardless of whether they have a tablet or not, can use the information in a, in a fair manner. At the same time, the support for users with dyslexia and other difficulties in reading conventional books has been greatly improved with the introduction of tablets with reading out functions and multimedia daisies, which were in introduced in, the, in Misako's presentation. In the future, rather than shifting from book media to ele electronic media, more inclusive school education will become possible by combining the at the, at the advantage of both. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Hei. So now uh, we open the uh, discussion. So uh, do you have any questions, comment, opinions? Um, maybe not only Ray, but also other speakers, toward the other speakers? Maybe. I, I could ask a question just to start a, us off. So, um, do you have a sense that, for example, the education ministry understands the potential of libraries to support in building media and information literacy, to support in building these vital skills? Or is it libraries are just doing it spontaneously because they've not been asked? I 
think ministry has the uh, concept uh, the library, the school library will useful for in information literacy, but but uh, when they made the what kind of initiative, mm, they don't uh, combine library and the information education uh, literacy education or like that, and. Mm, library is library, and <laughs> information literacy is information literacy. Is the uh, what can I say? It's yeah, it's separate. And um, unfortunately, many school libraries, uh, many school schools don't think um, school libraries can do something with information literacy or like that. Um, in actual schools, I think. Wisdom? I think the follow-up question could be that one of the essential roles of any national library association is to advocate to its national authorities to increased understanding of those two concepts and understanding that they are related that is schools are not schools on one hand and technology on the other hand that information literacy and digital information literacy is the the process of coming to understand how you use technology to improve your education and support your education system there must be integrated policies at national level to make these uh, to make the practical application of these things real to make it material and this this is one of the the things that ifla we ifla around the world tell our members that national associations have this function and we would hope that the Japan Library Association is also advocating very strongly to your national authorities to make them help them understand the importance of, um, you know, bringing libraries and technology together and getting decision makers to understand this as well. Someone thinks so, but someone <laughs> don't think so, so it is very difficult. Um, and uh, some people think uh, the, uh, li the school library will um, teach children how to read. And I think it is very uh, important, but they don't think it is uh, the school library is for information literacy. Uh, some 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 people think so, but some people don't think so. And um, so, it's not uh, enacted in the real schools. Maybe as far as the in Japan, most of the the school kids has their own tablet or PC, so they take phrase is all right because they have so uh, tra already started to be trained to use the information technology uh, method. The problem is that uh, as Ray mentions, uh, the content, what's the content as a kind of the educational material. So that material should be provided from school libraries or the school itself or some somewhere else. So that is not the final uh, political decision yet. That's why there are still a big discussion among uh, Japanese school people or school librarians, I guess. Do you have any questions or? Oh, sorry. If I may <laughs> to make a follow-up <laughs> comment, perhaps because um, you guys have interestingly tried to let the other librarians in Japan to come to the session, which is not really happening other than the organizers, and being just a participant. 
And to your question and background, I f first of all don't have background. I don't care what I had done before, but I would like to see f forward. Uh, setting aside, I have many experiences with dealing with the local libraries, being a user or talk to its administrators, the school librarians, and my other institutions helping the GigaNet problems in the real schools. Having many teachers are not digitally literate, nor they don't have resources with time and money. They're all pressed by the ex education, by the parents, sometimes monster parents. The kids who are not going to schools are many, more than a million, uh, including my grandson. The school system is not getting to tuned to the change of the society at large. That's my view. How about the libraries? Many libraries are trying hard to come up with, but not too many. And our education ministry's policy, they set some vision and some put budget. But when it comes to the implementation, it's largely to the local municipalities who are not well equipped with either the intellectual you know, powers, nor the funding, nor the citizen support. Most citizens, to be blunt, don't care. But also in Australia, I just checked with the website, the number of users at least are not increasing in Australia nor Japan to the libraries. Uh, about eight years ago, I had a good conversation with one of the general managers of the prefectural uh, library of Oita. He said, we are not to provide information or books to the kids or to the readers. We are to provide intellectual capabilities to the citizens, including giving on some startup workshop for women to empower, or legal advices who are not, well, who don't want to be picked up by your neighbor, or she went to the lawyer's office to discuss about divorce or things like that. So they are or trying to they are trying to help those who can't come to the school, or the um, day off day that every week they have for the public libraries. They invite the groups of kids from uh, ten schools locally or so forth, and just let them do whatever they like, because usually you are supposed not to make any sound noise, be quiet and read. For kids, that's very painful, right? Uh, unlike uh, just an exceptional kids, bright kids. So, but just come here, or those who cannot come, go to the school, come to the library. Just do anything fine. And gradually they are opening their minds to talk with others. So there are various different kinds of experiments, I guess. But by and large, we, at least in Japan, we are having struggling with the digitalization, the GigaNet, is a very good example how the envisioned nobody should be, shouldn't be left out and big money and what's happening in the schools. That's totally different views. So I was encouraged with Indonesian cases, if not it's whole of Indonesia that, that's happening, but you're trying to empower the citizens. That's the most important lesson I learned from today's session. Just sorry to bother, but for Misako, we, with all due respect, the new digital, uh, no, no, new disability discrimination elimination act is enacted. All the institutions, including public institutions, but also private sector companies, are obliged to provide um, reasonable accommodation to the people with disabilities for all the endeavors, for everything. Are they in tune now? And how much uh, the the daisy are equipped in the old public libraries? I don't see that many yet. Yeah? So there's no coherent policy government, but also the local governments are neglecting to be planned. Thank you. So it's a kind of the overall, but uh, I can add to the uh, same as Indonesian, New Zealand, not Australia, but New Zealand National Library provides to the school libraries directly the kind of the information uh, technology and the information, like a database, something like that. So I think um, the, the, the point in uh, Japan is a lack of the um, direction by the national government uh, related to libraries and internet or some information technology or information um, providing 
method or the way, we believe that library is a kind of the gateway, especially public libraries and school libraries, are the gateways of the information technology and information providing things. But it, um, I, I think they were uh, here today that we got some information from the Indonesia and Japan and Fiji about what the school library try to do not at the end yet, but we we got some cases. But, so as the IFRA, the international organization, we try to such kind of cases, each countries, they have their own success stories. So maybe Japan should follow the, the that kind of success stories, school libraries or other things. So maybe uh, as uh, Ms. Sacco mentioned that maybe other countries, like especially in the Europe, in the EU, the as for the um, the print disabled people to things at the point of the copyright issues that now EU, they set up the uh, directive, EU directive uh, exceptions uh, about uh, print uh, disabled people, but still the copyright issues in Europe, uh, I, for me, it seems like a confusion. So they should for us, it seems like that. But, you know, we can exchange the ideas, international basis. So the uh, it's one of the, uh, the, uh, the pillar, it's a kind of internet manifesto because the, each country they have the different dimensions. So we if we had the kind of in, international statement. So Maria or Stephen, would, would you mention about that? Please. Yes, thank you, Yasuyo. Uh, yeah, I would really like to follow up on that and just to mention that, as my colleague Winston mentioned at the beginning, uh, right now at IFLA we're also in the ongoing process of the updating our internet manifesto. And so I guess that also links to one of the questions that we heard previously in the session about what are some of the most uh, important challenges today. And uh, one of the challenges related to the library field, I guess, is the, the fact that a lot of uh, people are still not very aware of the importance of libraries in internet governance spaces and how to also par partner with libraries and how can they contribute to this. Uh, so for this, we're doing an updated version of the manifesto. Um, we already, well, to give you a little bit of context, we already have two previous manifestos. Uh, one of them was published in 2002 and another one in 2014. Uh, but of course, uh, a lot of things have happened uh, since that. So right now we're, we're doing this process together and we would really like to welcome you to engage in this process as well. So if you have, for example, ideas on how to partner with libraries in terms of internet governance, uh, we would really like to, to hear from you. Um, I will also share a link via the, the Zoom uh, chat and I can also share it with you here so you can provide your input on that and you can also feel free to approach me or my colleague Steven if you, if you would like to talk to us about that. Thank you. So how about you, Steven? Do you want to say something? <laughs> so, so thank you. N not so, so much to add, but I think, and hopefully this will stimulate debate for the last 15 minutes or so, or 10 minutes or so, I, I think I know. I think Waro used the word localization. It, and it's fascinating because if you go into the broader sustainable development space, everyone's talking about localization. I know it's a really big theme. It's this awareness that you can't do things from the top down, and that you actually need to engage on the ground. That simply turning on a switch centrally doesn't make things happen. And and I think that sort of speaks to. I think that speaks to exactly with the sorts of themes that we're looking to uh, address in this Internet Manifesto, as the idea is to actually set out what are the, the big ideas, the big values, the big principles that, that matter. And so the idea of a purposive Internet, Internet for a reason, um, a localised Internet, an Internet that is actually, it combines with local characteristics, it combines with local actors in order to make things happen. I guess a, a constructive 
approach towards information regulation online that's neither laissez-faire nor gatekeeping, but somewhere in the middle. And so trying to think about what are these themes, because I think a lot of the, the ideas that are coming out today, I think do resonate, and I think we'll hear talk about them a lot in that space, in this space here in Kyoto over the next few days. Um, but there are these parallelisms, there are these opportunities for, for partnership, for actually working together, both at the level of overall principles, but then that hopefully translates into things that happen on the ground. <laughs> um, and it's setting out this fact that you have this network of almost three million libraries globally um, on current measures, about half a million public and community libraries. We know that about two thirds of them are already connected on, on the data that we have. So there's already a, a pretty good network going on there. But underlining that this field is a, it's a resource, it's got potential. Maybe we're not 100% there yet. There needs to be work on attitudes, on innovation, on practices, on training. But there is this fantastic resource that's there and that effectively what we're trying to do with the manifesto is a business card. It's presenting what it is that libraries can offer to those in the internet governance space that agree with this logic of a no person left behind, localized, purposive, constructive internet model. So I think that that's what we're trying to do with, with the manifesto and hopefully through it find friends, find allies, find partners. Thank you, Stephen. So maybe, oh, uh, do I see one hand read up? Thank you, Stephen. Well, well said. And uh, that document sounds like it's something really important. Uh, my background is in technology. And I've come to libraries through uh, the, the need for communities to develop and understand the importance of this infrastructure since, well, since the mid-90s or before that. And, uh, and the library emerged as the, the way to understand these issues more than any other institution by a lot. All these issues flow through the library. It's the, it's, it's the vector for more relevant issues to more people than any other institution by far. They serve more people with different services than any other institution, really, by far. Uh, we've ad and advocacy, I think, is, uh, is what kind of gets to the first, the gentleman's question about perception, which I thought was on, on point, because libraries do so many things, but nobody knows. Not many people know or appreciate what libraries do. And so what's the strategy to make the case to be more assertive about the value of libraries and all their, their various services. We've identified and been working on uh, kind of three roles, uh, technology uh, related roles for libraries. One is as early adopter. So since books themselves, libraries have been the, the early adopters of information technologies. The first generation broadband, we stopped doing dial-up. Libraries were the places where people could go and go, oh, that's what they're talking about. Oh, I want that at home. You know, it's, it's like a, a showcase and a demo environment for emerging uh, consumer technologies. Very valuable, and, and people know that, but more people should understand it. And, and, and demonstrating this with projects, which is what's so powerful about the Indonesian story we heard, is, is, is a compliment to, to papers and studies. It gets read, but it's the, it's the action of people, the things that people see that, that really they remember and they relate to other. The, the, the second role that we identified was as um, uh, a second responder. We're in, a, we're in a time of increased uh, uh, danger uh, from extreme weather events. And we have our, our first responders, our police, our fire and ambulance, so forth. But after that, people look for and need help from other. They need information. They need communication. And libraries are well suited to play this role of second responder in, in, uh, in disaster response and increase the resilience of the community especially if they have internet and that internet is live and has backup power. The, the third one relates to uh, e-government. So 
every this is sweeping you know every government every level is automating you know, public services and that's great they do it to save money and they do it for convenience but when you ask them well who are those services for and and of course they're for people that are connected they're people that have internet access well what about the people that don't have internet access and they go oh yeah well they can go to the library well yes they can but do you share any of those savings with the library for taking on your support of your public services? Mm -hmm. Well, no, we don't. Well, why not? Well, we don't have to. Well, that's okay. Uh, but it's making the point that, that uh, we say, we advocate this point, is that government is obligated to assure access to public information and public services. Assure access. And if they don't have an answer to that, then they're they're cheating the taxpayers, and everybody's paying taxes. The poorest people can pay taxes. So uh, those are the those are the three things that we've kind of been drums we've been beating. But uh, you're all marvelous people, and you're doing great work. Thank you. Thank you. So I think that, um, our session time is very close. If somebody, a waste of. Thank you, Mr. Means. I suspect you might also have been at the World Summit in 2003. It sounds like you might have been. Um, but I remember that one of the key things that came out of the World Summit was the requirement on states' party of the UN to work for integrated national planning for, inf for the information society. Integrated national planning was a strong recommendation. And it hasn't always quite worked out that way. But I think, you know, through all the uh, development of the, the WISIS and the post-WISIS process and all the sustainable development goals, the, the urge to, to integrate planning has been there in the background, but there have been also forces working perhaps against that. And one of those is... Uh, the, the, the contrary force which is working for fragmentation of the internet. We have to work for integration of the internet to keep it unique, keep it together, and to encourage member states to uh, integrate their information planning. And that would pick up all of the um, social and cultural and economic issues which you people um, are making and put them all together in a package which hopefully would get the um, backing of national governments. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. This is the, the session is ending, so I should uh, say something about the overall of this session. But those people are really good speech for us, so I think I should not say any more. So I think this is the end of the session. Thank you very much, the speakers and audiences. 皆さんご協力ありがとうございました。このセッションは終わらせていただきます。ありがとうございました。<音楽>